All right, this is 7.2, right triangle trigonometry, and this will be the first video. So we're going to look at right triangle trigonometry, and basically this is a study of right uh, triangles. So that means that you're going to have a triangle where the one angle is 90 degrees. The other two angles are going to be acute. And the reason why is because uh, remember that the interior of a triangle's angles have to sum to 180 degrees. So if this one's already 90 degrees, then angle A plus angle B has to equal 90 degrees as well. Uh, so an acute angle is one that measures less than 90 degrees or pi over 2 in radians. Uh, so you may have used Pythagorean in the past. Pythagorean theorem states that uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what that means is side a and side b, if you square those and add them together, that has to equal side c squared. And remember that c has to be the hypotenuse. Uh, and a and b have to be the legs of the triangles. So the hypotenuse or side C is the side across from the right angle. Uh, so this becomes very important because this has to be the longest side. Okay, so that's Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean theorem once again relates sides together because we're looking at side A, side B, and side C. What trigonometry allows us to do in this section is relate angles with sides. Uh, so if you could please cross this out and rewrite it. So we're going to write it as so, SOH, ka, CAH, TOA. And this is going to be a mnemonic device that will allow us to be able to figure out what trig function relates to what sides. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to draw up an angle, or a triangle, excuse me, draw this up, I'm put my right angle in here, and I have two choices for angles. So in this instance, I'm going to let this be the angle okay, that we're looking at. So if this is the angle, I can pretty much label the sides accordingly. So the side across from this angle, I'm going to call side opposite. And the side adjacent, or next to the angle, I'm going to call adjacent. And the hypotenuse is the angle across from that right angle, so we're just going to label that as hypotenuse. So if I shorten this down and say opposite is O, adjacent is A, and a hypotenuse is H, then I can use these mnemonic devices to relate the sides to the angle. So for instance, the first trig function we're going to look at is called sine. And sine is abbreviated as S-I-N, or sin. And sine, by definition, is sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's where we get the mnemonic portion of so. The second trig function is cosine. So cosine is abbreviated as COS. So cosine of the angle is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's where we get the ka portion of the mnemonic device. And the third major trig function is tangent. And tangent's abbreviated as tan, and it's defined as O over A, and that's where we get the TOA of the mnemonic device. So these are the major three, but there's actually six total trig functions. So the next ones are actually reciprocal functions. 
and they're the reciprocal of the ones that we just defined. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And that's defined as CSC. So the definition of cosecant of the angle is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. All I did was take sine's definition, opposite over hypotenuse, and turn it upside down or take the reciprocal of it. And that's why these are called reciprocal functions. So cosecant is going to be the fourth trig function. The fifth trig function is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. And cosine's reciprocal is secant. So secant of the angle is hypotenuse over adjacent. Once again, I took cosine's definition, adjacent over opposite, and took the reciprocal of it. Uh, and the sixth trig function is the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent's reciprocal is cotangent. So cotangent, or abbreviated as COT, is the reciprocal of tangent, so I just flip that over, adjacent over opposite. Okay, so those are the six uh, major trig functions. So just to write them a little bit nicer, once again, if you know SOHCAHTOA, you're able to come up with the first three. And then if you know the reciprocal of each one, so sine is cosecant, theta, cosine is secant, theta, and um, the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Okay. All right, so those are the six key trig functions. I want you guys to notice that the reciprocal sign is not secant. So you do not match the s's up and the reciprocal cosine is not cosecant. You do not match up the c's. So just remember that, that they don't match up. Uh, but once again, if you know the first three, you're able to come up with all of them just by knowing what the reciprocal of each one is. Okay, this is going to take some practice. So my advice to you, you know, is to spend some time memorizing what I just wrote down. Okay, so this next example says, find the value of each of the sig tr six trig functions of the angle theta in the figure. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's draw in theta. So I'm drawing in theta, and theta is the angle in the uh, bottom portion of the triangle. Uh, so before we start, I'm going to label the sides. So the square root of 7 is the opposite side from theta. 6 is the adjacent side. And the hypotenuse is unknown at this current time. Uh, and we have the definition of six trig function. So this is what we know. So let's write out all six. So once again, sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. Uh, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant of the angle, so that's hypotenuse over opposite. The reciprocal of cosine is secant of the angle, so it's hypotenuse over adjacent. And finally, the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent of the angle, which is adjacent over opposite. Uh, so if you notice in the definitions, we have to have the hypotenuse. So step number one is to find the hypotenuse. Okay. By the way, you, in other examples, you may be given the hypotenuse and not know another side. So in this case, we have to find the hypotenuse, but you could have to find the opposite side or the adjacent side. It just depends on what the original triangle looks like. So to find the hypotenuse, we have to use Pythagorean's theorem. And remember, Pythagorean 
theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, c is always the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to label that as h. Um, side opposite, I'm going to call a, so I'm going to put in a square root of 7 there. And I'm going to square 6 because that's the adjacent side. So the square root of 7, the square root of 7 squared is 7. Uh, 6 squared is 36, and that equals h squared. So to get h by itself, I'm going to have to add these two and then take uh, the square root of it. So 36 plus 7 is 43, and if I take uh, the square root of it, I get h isolated. By the way, I should have two values, plus or minus, but because we're talking about length, we're going to accept that the square root of 43 is going to be h. Uh, if you can reduce down the radical, you can go ahead and do so. On your homework, uh, they should probably tell you that, but sometimes if you enter in the answer and says, this answer is correct, but we don't like the form, try reducing it down. So we have the square root of 43. I can't reduce that down because 43 is prime. Uh, so now we have all of our values. We have the opposite side again is square root of 7 the adjacent side is 6, and the hypotenuse is square root of 43. So let's go ahead and get the, the 6 trig function. So sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is given to us as the square root of 7, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 43. Now you can't leave your answer like that. You're going to have to rationalize the denominator. And in order to do that, we have to get rid of this square root. So in order to do that, I have to uh, multiply by the square root of 43 over the square root of 43. Um, that's like multiplying by 1. So that's how this is working out. Okay. Uh, so what I get is the square root of 43 times the square root of 43, which is just 43. And now I have to multiply underneath the radical. So 43 times 7, I get 21. Uh, 4 times 7 is 28, 29, 30. Uh, so I got the radical 301 over 43. And that's my first answer. So let's go ahead and accept this and move on. OK, so 2, we have to go after cosine. So the adjacent side is 6 over the square root of 43, which is hypotenuse. So once again, because I have a radical in the denominator, I have to rationalize it. In order to do that, I'm going to have to take the denominator and multiply that by the same thing. And because we're trying to make this uh, mathematically correct, I have to have the square root of 43 over the square root of 43. So the square root of 43 times the square root of 43 is just 43. And then in the numerator, now I have 6 times the square root of 43. I didn't multiply 6 and 43 together because the 6 was not underneath the radical. So uh, I check really quick to make sure I can't reduce the 6 and the 43 down, and I can't. So I'm going to accept this as my second answer. Okay, the third trig function is tangent. And remember, that's uh, defined as opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to plug in the, the material. So the opposite side is the square root of 7 over the adjacent side, which is 6. Now, I don't need to do anything to this because I do not have a radical in the denominator, so I can just accept this answer. Uh, now for the reciprocal. Functions. So once again, remember the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Uh, so I'm looking for hypotenuse over opposite. And what I can do is look at what I wrote. Uh, so I plugged in square root of 43 for the hypotenuse, and the opposite side was square root of 7. Now I notice I have a radical in the denominator, so I have to rationalize that by taking and multiplying by 1. So I have the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. And now I just have to do the math. So I already did 43 times 7 before, and I know that that turns out to be 301. 
So I get the square root of 301 in the numerator, and in the denominator, square root of 7 times square root of 7 is just 7. So there's the answer for cosecant. Now, the reciprocal function of cosine is secant. Uh, so I know that's defined as hypotenuse over adjacent, and I'm going to plug in the material, so square root of 43 over the adjacent side, which is 6. Uh, for this one, I don't have a radical in the denominator, so I'm going to just accept this answer. Uh, and finally, the sixth one is cotangent. Uh, remember, I'm flipping over tangent, so you get adjacent over opposite, and I'm going to plug this in. So the adjacent side uh, is 6 over the square root of 7. And by the way, all you have to do is look at what you wrote down and flip it over. As long as you have the in initial definitions right, that shouldn't uh, hurt anything. All right, uh, in this case, I have to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by square root of 7 over the square root of 7. And I get in the numerator 6 times the square root of 7 over 7. And that is all six trig functions. So we're done with this example. Now I'm going to introduce you to objective number two, uh, but there will be another video covering the rest of this. So objective number two says use the fundamental identities. So we just learned the definition of sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and cotangent. Now we have to look at the fundamental identities, and these are important. You have to memorize them. Uh, this is going to be very important, especially when we look at chapter 8, uh, because chapter 8 relies upon you knowing what these are. So I told you before that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So we can write that up as cosecant theta equals 1 over sine theta. It means the same thing. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So secant theta it can be defined as 1 over cosine theta. And cotangent theta is 1 over tangent theta. So these are the reciprocal identities. What I told you before was the reciprocal functions. So these are the reciprocal identities. The quotient identities. So not only is tangent tangents defined as opposite over adjacent, now we can define these with sine and cosine. So tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, and cotangent theta equals cosine theta over sine theta. So once again, these are the fundamental identities. All right, um, once again, you're going to need them for this test, but really need them for chapter 8. So I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to pick up uh, by doing another video, which we will look at um, this, which says use a definition or identities to find the exact value of each of the remaining trigonometric functions.